Hello everyone and welcome to the review of the Hubson X4 Desire Pro model or H216A. This is a future packed quadcopter with an entry level price. As you will see it has a lot of features, a lot of lot of features and it comes uh, not only with wireless remote control but it also comes with a controller, a very smart controller. It's a Bluetooth direct connect to smartphone controller and I'm going to show you how that works and it has FPV, it has uh, an HD camera, it has of course GPS, automatic uh, return to home and uh, waypoints, it has automatic flight mode such as circle mode and a lot of things found on uh, bigger hubs and quadcopters. So let's see what we get inside the box, uh, this is a box and in the box we get air so this is Chinese air very precious keep this very safe because it's very important all right so it's prop protection you get four prop guards very nice plastic quality they are stiff but still flexible so this can really take a bump and will protect the propellers but these are intended to be used indoor not outside because outside they won't save your drone from crashing and they will act such as a branch hook or will uh, get uh, more air surface and the wind will fight the drone more so you get a disclaimer warning you get some uh, uh, checklist with what's included with the drone and you get a quick start guide that shows how to prepare the drone luckily it's in English and it's fully understandable so it's a big plus there the transmitter it's the new model transmitter this has a mobile phone holder included and it can take really big phones such as 5.5 or maybe 6 inch phones which is good and it has a very nice game like um, shape like a game controller it has these thumbs adapters and they have small spikes on them makes them uh, really comfortable and they will not slip from your fingers it has also functional buttons on this side here and on this side here and you have this automatic takeoff landing button automatic return to home and power switch it also has some leds here we are going to see those later. It also works with four uh, AAA batteries. And there is something else here on this part of the box. So we get a bag with, of course, spare propellers, a full set, a bag of various screws, some which are small, some which are big, and a screwdriver very nice screwdriver and it even has a protective cap so you do not stab yourself with it and of course the battery charger and all this means that the battery is actually inside the quadcopter and let's take a look at that also and yes it's inside it uses a two cell battery 750 milliamps 15 C uh, discharge rate and it has some warnings there which we never read so in front you get the camera and I'm going to take this off right now All right protection is off you get a micro SD slot here and the micro SD card that you see here it's mine because it doesn't come with one included I have already pre-installed mine because I'm preparing this for the flight test uh, it has a micro USB port here this is for updating firmware and uh, modding it if you are into modding and hubs and quadcopters can be modded and some of the restrictions can be enabled or disabled that way and the motor pods are partially cooled as you can see the motor is not covered some part of it is exposed and it's geared motor here it has plastic gearing inside so I have installed the application is the 
X hubs an app and now I'm going to try to set up the quadcopter I'm going to do the initial setup I haven't read the manual so let's see how easy it is to have a setup quad or not so I'm going to plug in the battery and the quadcopter should start and it did start and I'm now going to have to see a wireless network here a new wireless network let's see Hubson H216A and it asks for a password and does it have a password on it? no, so we need to refer to the manual and the password is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and I'm going to click on connect it's now connecting and it's connected and now if I open the app I accept and now you need to select your quadcopter here the model and mine is the H216A there you go enter device and we have a manual here an introductive part and you can scroll through it and it will show you all the commands and I'm going to click on learning completed and there you go we already have image and the quadcopter wants to do the compass calibration compass calibration should never be uh, do indoor but just for fun I'm going to do it because I want to get rid of the notification there and it was successful and now I need to bind to current mobile device so that other mobile devices cannot connect to the aircraft unless you reboot the aircraft all right so it has a safety feature because this quadcopter has a default password of one two three four five six seven eight uh, it's possible that another mobile phone could connect to the drone and let's call it hijack it but it can be jammed and i'm going to click on ok and GPS accuracy, no, I'm going to skip that so it's bound to the drone now and I have image, image check it has a bit of lag not very much but it's definitely there it's seeable but it's acceptable because you are not going to do racing with this this is for moderate flying and taking some pictures and video and it should be enough for that let's see the app now a bit currently the drone is in flyable status and if you touch the screen you are practically uh, building your joysticks and you can move the commands here and you can see in the uh, right corner there it shows the uh, percentage of my finger gliding on the screen and that translates into a stick command which will control the quadcopter so basically now I can arm the quadcopter by doing the normal arming procedure but it gives me also a warning weak GPS signal because if you go into the settings you have an option here somewhere we are going to look for that uh, immediately but now I want to make the controller work and to do that you are going to turn on the controller and now you need also to enable the uh, Bluetooth of your mobile phone it's now enabled and now you need to enable the controller so I'm entering the setup again going to controller and here you are uh, having this option using remote control I'm pressing that and now the phone the app will search for the Bluetooth controller there and I'm going to tap refresh and because the Bluetooth on uh, my mobile phone has uh, failed uh, I have uh, switched phones and now if I go to this uh, control controller 
option and I'm going to click on refresh there you go you have the Hubson Bluetooth controller there and I'm going to click on connect and Bluetooth connection was successful and I have a steady blue light here and when I move the sticks here I now get indications on the stop corner there the percentage of the stick movement I do and now I can put the phone here let's see does it fit this bracket yes it's doing just fine the mobile phone has 6 inch screen so it's rather large but it fits nicely and with this controller uh, it's very easy to uh, keep in your hands and now let's see if I can arm this and the setting is in controller and its name aircraft requires a strong GPS signal to take off I'm going to select no and now if I put this in view let's zoom out the props are free from hitting anything I should be able to arm it and there you go and all systems are ready for a flight test now let's see some other quick options here so with this button I can take pictures switching this will put it in a video recording mode and now the video is recording on the micro SD card that I have inserted I can stop the recording from here and these buttons here it's fl flight modes we have waypoint follow mode you can do follow me with this quadcopter and of course orbit this enables or disables the uh, display here about the stick uh, percentage and you have return to home and automatic takeoff I have also discovered the use for the magic box you can actually use it to wedge the controller like that if you want to keep it on the table so now I'm going to uh, turn this off uh, put the battery on charge although it shows 100% uh, I don't know, I'm going to check it with a good balance charger because it uses regular plugs, a JST and a balance port so I'm not going to use the included charger I'm going to charge the battery and prepare it to take it for a flight which you are going to see immediately so I have uh, teleported to the local flying field and I'm now going to test the quadcopter and see how it performs outside and to do that I'm going to prepare my mobile phone Hopefully this time the app will behave normally and the controller will work. So I'm going to unlock the phone and my finger have frozen because it's a few a few a few more degrees below zero currently but we hope to see a great flight from this little Hobson. So I'm going to connect the battery properly I'm going to pack in away all that wires and they must go inside and they did I'm going to let it there on the ground I'm gonna power on the controller as well let's see did it connect it automatically connected because it's a single wireless around here that has the working password and now I'm going to open the app there is a bug in the app uh, it will not collect to the quadcopter unless you disable mobile data and that is awkward because there is a Google map app that downloads data from the internet and you cannot download the map uh, if you connect to the quadcopter uh, the app doesn't know to connect to the wireless to the quadcopter and to use mobile data it will try to connect the quadcopter using mobile data which will result in connection not being available so I'm going to enter the device now I already have image and now it wants me to calibrate the compass so I'm going to rotate as the image shows on the screen 
and now with it facing down and that was okay let's see bind current okay I'm going to bind it and now I'm going to do the GPS accuracy test I'm going to click on next testing GPS but my mobile phone doesn't have the location service enabled so I'm going to go into the settings and enable that as well location GPS accuracy failed right uh, I'm going to try to do that again but no, let's just forget it because I'm losing time with it uh, it already has eight satellites the quadcopter has positioning and status is motor locked because it's obvious it's disarmed so I'm going to start video recording now and it's now recording it has a timer there all right so let's arm the motors and nope the controller does not work because my bluetooth is currently disabled so i'm going to enable the bluetooth i'm going to go into settings controller using remote control and i'm going to select my controller and connect so you need to do that bluetooth connection is successful right we have a confirmation beep and now i can properly arm the motor so let's take it up into the air a bit lower and it seems fine it does have a bit of lag when i use the control stick it will kind of take that in take that command in with a bit of delay it's kind of weird let's see how it goes from the screen the screen control is now disabled as I have the controller enabled and that's not good the app has completely disconnected from the quadcopter so now it's connected back that was not nice of it so Hubson uh, hasn't improved the app a lot because these things happened previously on their app with the H501 uh, quadcopter nope that's not fine don't go up so something is definitely not going fine is now returning to home and it's returning home into a tree i did got, got control over it so mm, something is not right i'm going to land it and i'm going to disable the motors and it won't allow me so i'm going to try to use the controller but yet again it won't do that all right finally managed to stop it so i'm going to shut down the controller because it seems that the controller has some issues uh, now I'm going to stop the video recording to have that evidence and I'm going to try to fly it again without the controller hopefully this time I won't have so much issues so it is connected to the wireless mobile data is disabled Bluetooth is enabled I'm going to shut Bluetooth down less interference all right so now going back into the app let's see 
Will it arm the motors now? Yes, I have control from the mobile phone. And now I'm flying with the app, which is, of course, weird and my fingers are completely frozen. But it does work, so I'm going to start video recording back again. And now it is recording. It's in GPS mode and it's holding the position rather stable. I'm going to bring it closer and a bit lower. And I can tell you that it's actually smoother by using the mobile phone app than is with uh, the controller there. So I can say from the start that the controller is no no near <laughs> I won't call it perfect but it's not that good I'm really disappointed because I liked that format of the controller but not this way it's terrible beside the lag it's also breaking up the connection and will make the quadcopter go into return to home mode or do strange things and look at that, look how easy I can fly it with the app, it's very smooth, no drama, no issues, nothing, no disconnects. Remember this is a wireless drone, so if you are flying this around other wireless networks there will be a lot of interference and it will drastically reduce the range and uh, this quadcopter has a range specified range of maximum 200 meters if i remember correctly and that is without any kind of interference so you can expect in such environment there are around 20 wireless networks here uh, to get only half of that or even less and look at that it's really gracious it flies really really smooth and you can control it with the app, impressive. Let's now try to do something smart with it, so I'm going to try to do a follow me, let's see, following mode, it needs GPS accuracy. All right, next, nope, Tri I need to bring the quadcopter next to me, so I'm going to land it, I'm going to disable the motors, motors are now disabled, and I'm going to select now follow me mode again, GPS accuracy, right, so I'm going to click on next, Testing for GPS accuracy. It says that the distance from uh, the quadcopter to my mobile phone is 6 meter, which is not good. It says that it will not work for follow me or cause danger. I'm going to try that again. Following mode. Next. Now the distance is 7 meters, 6 meters, 7 meters, so nope, the GPS coordinates between my mobile phone and the quadcopter are not that close. So let me try to see if I can improve accuracy of uh, my location. location on and do I have something more advanced it's device only and I can go to high accuracy yes let's try that again following mode next and the distance is now six meters which is still not good 
7 meters, nope, it won't work, I'm going to try again, next, no, it's again 7 meters, I'm going to try something else, I'm going to shut down the app completely, I'm going to turn off the quadcopter, Probably the quadcopter has the return to home address for where I have started initially. So I'm going to connect the battery again now. I'm going to wait for the wireless to start. And there it goes, the Hubsun. I have connected to it, GPS is enabled on my phone, agree, I'm now going to go back to my device, it has connected, now it needs compass calibration. Hello phone, where are you going? Oh, for Christ's sake. And I hope that I did calibrate the compass. And now it wants to bind the aircraft. Okay, bind it. And I'm going to do the GPS accuracy test good GPS accuracy because it's around 5 meters if you can imagine 5 meters between the quadcopter and the mobile phone but hey at least I will get the smart modes working now I'm going to put the wires back don't go again mobile phone oh I have 11 satellites this should work hopefully now Going to arm the motors, motors are armed, going to get a bit of altitude, that should be enough, right, so I will let it hover a bit to stabilize itself, it's now stable and let's see, I'm going to go into following mode the aircraft to a height of 3 meters and maintain a distance of 5 meters of more. Do not take off in a confined space or things like that. Alright, so I need to get some altitude and take it a bit away. So, it's doing something and I think that it's working now and I can take it a bit lower. Let's see. Are you following me or not? Hello, yes, it's following me, but it's not orienting it uh, at me, so I need to yaw the quadcopter manually, and now it does follow me, so follow me mode really works, and now I've gotten warning that the battery is under 40%, but I'm still going to run it. Let's see, I did forgot something and that was to turn on the video recording, but that's fine because you see until now only issues <laughs> and you got that on camera and now you get the follow me footage, which is good, it's smooth enough. Let's see, uh, I will put it that way and I will try a bit to run. And it's holding up just fine, but it will not yo itself at me. And that could be very easy to be done because the drone has a compass and it has a heading. So it should look at the way I'm running at. So probably this way it will follow me better. Nope, it's still not yoing itself. So follow me only works uh, kind of in a straight line, 
for example, keep it uh, at uh, close like that and it will just maintain the angle and keep you in its sight. And I'm at 28%, I'm still flying, I don't have a total flying time, but I think that it should be around 10 minutes, it's also very cold, so the battery, it will not do very good. Let's see, will, will it auto land? Yes, it's auto landing itself, or not. I'm going to stop the video recording so that the file won't crash when the drone lands, if it lands or if it falls from the sky. It's still at 28% and it's not dropping lower so maybe it's just the cold making the battery sag. Twenty seven percent. So there's plenty of life actually left in the battery, but the cold is messing it up and it's showing a lower voltage, a bigger voltage sag. So eventually, you do get lower runtime. Also, hovering a drone will actually make it use more battery than gentle flying it. I'm at 23% battery. A uh, nice thing about the app is that now it has vibration alerts when the battery is running out so you can know without looking at the screen that something is wrong with it. 21% I'm just going to land it eventually because I don't like killing lipos which are so young. So there you go, there is, this is the new desire, it's desirable to be used with the app, but not with that controller, that controller is really bad and will mess things up. You seen that when I try to uh, install that on my other phone, it actually did not connect at all and I'm using another smartphone and it does connect to this one but it will connect and disconnect and connect and disconnect mid-flight and that will make the app go crazy and switch to mobile phone controls and then back to the controller and it even triggered the drone to return to home so definitely really messy and it's definitely not recommended to use that at least in my case maybe I have another issues with my second mobile phone and it really takes the fun away from flying this with a proper controller so the app works fine I ignore the controller you can consider that it doesn't come with that and now the battery voltage is gently going up because there's no more load onto the motor so there you go this was the flight test of the desire i hope that you have enjoyed that it seems that the functions work as well like the follow me but you need proper GPS and it needed also restart. So I'm going to shut this off. Be sure to follow my next uploads where I'm going to try to mod the battery on this and get some uh, more flight time with it. As the original battery is kind of weird and it doesn't allow easy replacement. Hello phone, where are you going? And now I'm just going to turn it off. See you until next time. Bye bye.